wanted to, uh, to point out here, which I showed you how i done the guides, is that the reason um, when I'm coming in here and grinding where I kiss off, I, I'm pretty sure I showed you this, but I'm going to go over it again. I bring it down to where the brass uh, is perfectly flat and you can see a little bit of an aluminum ring. Let me get you closer. Uh, the reason I do that, it has a lot to do with volume control so that I'm consistent. Uh, when I bring it down and touch it and I get that little bit of aluminum ring, it makes it where it's the same amount of height that's taken off because that's quite a bit of volume change. Uh, when you consider how much excess guide is uh, taken out of the head, it can make as much as uh, three cc's in the runner port volume. But hell, I've even seen it make damn near five. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you. And then when it gets done, this is what you get. They're all consistent. Uh, I think you can see the exhaust port here. All of them will be exactly the same height. Then I go in there and put my little chamfer on them to slide it in and out while I'm doing the stuff and setting it up and everything. So anyway, well, the next step here after that is we're fixing to attack the pillar of power uh, on the Denmark Duo. Like I said, I don't get to do this very often where I'm actually doing four heads at the same time. But um, they're starting to come into play now and man, they really do look great. I'm hoping for a great volume, although chamber-wise, I can't get them too big because they're putting them on 350 motors. It will go to a 383, so I can't, you know, hit the chambers too awful big, and we don't want to go too big on the ports. They're 190s to start with. I did see, see them in the beginning, and they were not 190. They, well, you know, they never are. Uh, consistency from head to head sometimes can be off as much as five or six cc's. So anyway, let me get this finished and let's attack the pillar of power. Now that uh, every one of, uh, of the uh, guides have been leveled with my spot facer, it leaves kind of a rough edge inside the guide. So even before I hand home the guide, because I don't want to tear my stones up, I take this little wedge tool, I think y'all might have seen it in other videos, but I thought I'd show you, and I go through every one of them. I start at the top, make a little chamfer, go to the next one, and this is before I hand hone them. Because if I don't do that, then what will happen is when I go in there with my honing stones, it's possible that an edge or a sharp edge could hit the honing stone and hurt it. And uh, when you're hand honing these, you got to constantly uh, have the little tool that comes with it to keep that stone straight. Uh, one of the problems with the pro comps that are a little bit worse, not a whole lot, but a little bit worse than say some of the higher dollar heads is the inconsistency on clearances. I've gotten these things uh, from people where all the different manufacturers, and I'm not going to call no names, that send the heads assembled with valves, the upgraded valves, and it's just atrocious how from guide to guide, even with the heads being assembled with the valves that they supposedly fit to it, clearances being off as much as a thousandth from one guide to another, uh, when most of the time, especially if it's an upgraded valve, that really tells you because them upgraded valves, something like a REV or Manly or Foray, they tend to have a pretty straight stem if you get a high quality valve. Well, uh, they're off and what I tell people always to get the heads bare and let me build them up. Like John and Peter from Denmark have done, they got the heads bare, they let me custom order the valves and that allows me to go in there and hand hone them. Uh, I do check every single valve in three positions, the bottom, middle, and top of the valve, and make sure that they're all the same. If I start getting uh, more than, I'd say, two tenths difference on a valve, that's .0002, then I'll number that valve and hone that valve to that particular guide and mark it in the head. Um, 
All head bites heads are always numbered in some position, two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, and the valves are stamped and numbered on it for that reason. So if you get a set of heads from me and you see them stamps, note that that's why. It's not because lapping the valve or whatever seats it. It's because it went through a process where I hand honed them and there might be differences in the valve to the guide. So I wanted to show you that, how I go in there and start and you know it just takes a few minutes but it's just attention to detail going in there hitting all the chamfers and I'll even go back on the top side and hit them which is this area right here I'll go back in there and hit them and that's just uh, so I can get a good straight shot because if it tears up a honing stone which you know you go through them a lot then the honing stone is going to be fractured in that one spot you're not going to have the correct cross hatch going through because you'll have that little dip where it broke the stone but anyway I do that right there and uh, before I hone it these are my dummy valves I typically take a set of these valves and the reason I chop them off is so that when I put them in the head see right there when I put them inside of the head I can rotate them in the fixture let me get this right here hit okay now they'll slide right in see so that way look on this side now notice how there's hardly any, none out of here, but just a little bitty tit of the valve here. That's because if you don't do that and you're trying to rotate it in any kind of fixture like my porting bench, it'll hang on there and I leave just a little bit extra out so then I can roll it over, pull it right out when I'm blending the combustion chamber or rolling it or doing whatever I do. So anyway, I just wanted to take a glance. I didn't want you to miss that step. So now that that's done, I turn when I get them chamfered, I'm going to take and turn them around and we're going to knock out the pillar of power. That's our next deal. Because the two tricks to this head, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is the 1206 roof on a 190 port. We're not going crazy because he's not that big a cubic inch. But we're going to straighten out this roof with a Brzezinski plate 1206 to the top and then we're going to take out the pillar of power. Those are the two mods in stage four we do with the amount of cc's he got because I go in here hitting them too big and it would be a dog. The guys would put them on their car. One of them's going on a Corvette uh, which weighs probably around 3,300 pounds or something like that. If it don't have velocity, it'll kill it. So anyway, we'll work on the pillar of power and we'll go from there. All right. Okay, what I'm getting ready to do right now 